The wait is over. It's game time on WZOT 101.9. This is Rock Mart High Football. Presented by the John Purser Allstate Agency, Floyd Medical, the Nathan Dean Agency. All right, we're here at Dade County where we're taking on the Dade County Wolverines. And um, Michael, who you got out there is the uh, captains for tonight's team. Yeah, so tonight's captains uh, are is, is Timothy Malone, number 62, senior. Aunt Lester, number one, senior. <laughs> Hayden Raber, number nine, senior. And Chandler Cooper, number 30, all seniors. You good right. to see Aunt back out there tonight. He was one of the kids that was uh, had a little something going on last week and didn't play. And so good to see him back in uniform, and he, he's liable to have a big night. Timothy yes, Malone, one of the uh, captains out there tonight, had a big week last night. He had a lot of tackles and uh, played both ways. All right, let's see who's going to win the coin toss here. And we talked about getting the toss, and they've elected to defer to the second half. But Cooper had uh, – a big week. He uh, had three uh, pass catches in that first drive, and he, he had said he wanted the ball. Yeah. And he got it, and, so. and they gave it to him. Well, it's good to see our band you, you got know, here. You know, you talk about <laughs> Chandler yeah. said he wanted the ball. Uh, every athlete we've had on the show, they all tell Coach Parson, "I want the ball. Throw yeah. me the ball." Yeah, he so. said he's got lime and won't catch passes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, uh, Mark talked about it. The band did finally arrive right here about five minutes before game time. Uh, it takes a long time to get all those buses and yeah. trucks and trailers over the hill. But uh, they're they're walking around the track. If you haven't been able to come out and see our band tonight uh, yet and uh, come out for the next home game and watch our band play, uh, they are, uh, they'll put on a good show for you. Jackets so, getting ready to come through the run through. And, and it uh, says that the Jackets are hot, and I'd agree with that. They are. They, they are hot. And, uh, and hopefully to keep it, keep it uh, warmed up here tonight. You know, I got stung by two yellow jackets a couple weeks ago. I mean, they, they hurt bad, so this might be <laughs> rough up here tonight. <laughs> All right. All right. We're just a minute or two away from kickoff. Let's take one final break before we get this game started, Mark. Freeman Harris Funeral Home, the funeral home that has been providing a strong arm for our friends and neighbors to lean on for the past 76 years. We are proud of the young folks of our community and wish for them success on the field and off. Freeman Harris Funeral Home, Rock March very own. Chicken Scratch Cakes and Cupcakes at 103 South Marble Street in Rock Mart is the place to go for made-from-scratch bakery items. They specialize in cakes with cakes include homemade cream cheese, lemon buttercream icing, as well as many more flavors. Try their specialty cupcakes, Chicken Scratch Cakes and Cupcakes, 103 South Marble Street in Rock Mart. Mitchell Chiropractic and Wellness at 111 Felton Drive helps people achieve their wellness objectives by combining skill and expertise. If you are experiencing headaches, back, neck, or leg pain, call today at 770-684-4963. Lewis Motor Company in Rock Mart carries a wide variety of quality vehicles with the inventory updated on a regular basis to provide you with the best selection. Let Lewis Motor Company put you in a vehicle with their guaranteed credit approval. Lewis Motor Company, 218 South Piedmont Avenue in Rock Mart. Now, back to the game on WZOT 101.9. All right, we're back here where we're getting ready to kick off. Uh, Rockmart won the toss and going to defer to the second half. And so, got Noah Hughes out there getting ready to kick off to, um, looks like number 12 is deep for them for uh, the Wolverines. And yeah, number 12, we'll call his name a lot. He's plays running back for him. His last name's Webb. And uh, he's one of their primary players. Rockmark gets their foot into it. It's a high, short kick. Going to be fielded about the 10-yard line. Going to be right at the middle of the field. And Rockmark stacks him up at the 20, 22, got to about the 23-yard line. And there is a flag on the play, and that's going to be a late hit on the Yellow Jackets. Uh, Tackle one, made there by number six for the Yellow Jackets. That's uh, Javen Watley. And uh, But uh, one of our players came in late, and I'm not going to call his number, but uh, that kid has a problem with that. <laughs> he is uh, a little too fired up, and uh, that is not the first time this year. So uh, they will call that targeting, 
and uh, came in that'll with a, his headgear. That'll be a and that'll give him yards. 15 more yards. So the Wolverines will have good field position to start the ball game. They'll have the ball up on about the 38-yard line. And so the jacket defense is out that's, there. That's the kind of mistakes we talked about last night on the, the show that's going to have to be mentally stopped. Yeah, and the ball carrier was already on the ground. He came in head first on the ground to hit him long after he'd been tackled. The Wolverines line up in the wing T, and they're going to give it to the running back right up the middle, and he picks up about 11 yards before we're finally able to, br to bring him down. That was number 18 for Dade County on the carry. And uh, he picked up good yardage. And his last name is Pangle. P-A-N-G-L-E, Pangle. And they got a first down out of that first play of the game. I believe the tackle was made there by number 10, Makai Floyd. So they're going to try a little misdirection. And uh, they got number 18, Pangle, lined up at running back again. And they're going to give it to their wing back, fumbled. and he fumbled it trying to get the speed sweep around the right side. I think he got but, it back. Uh, Dade County fell on it, and it'll be second down. They did lose a yard. It'll be second down and 11 yards to go. So, yeah, it kind of uh, looked, looked kind of like a, um, a handoff wasn't a good, clean handoff. Yeah, on they that. run a traditional look to the wing tee. Quarterback gets up under center each time. Running back right behind him and two wing backs and two tight ends in the ball game for Dade County. Dressed in gold shirts and burgundy pants. Quarterback under center waiting on the snap. And he's going to give it to his running back who is up the middle again. And this time we bottle him up after a shorter gain for about five yards. He Back crossed on. the 50, so Dade County has crossed midfield on their first possession of the night. And that was Pangle, the ball carrier again, number 18. He picked up five. It'll be third and seven. Tackle made there by number 68 for the Yellow Jackets, Deacon Allen. Go out to block up that middle. They Deacon playing right in the center, and if that's the offense they're going to run, he's going to have to have a big night to stop them. And third and seven, this is a big play for the Wolverines. They give it to their running back again right up the middle, and they pick up about two yards and took it to the 46-yard line. So it'll be a fourth down and about four yards to go in the ball at the 46. And that's the Rotmark 46, and it looks like that, we'll, that uh, Dade County is going to go for it. Quarterback comes all the way over to the sideline after each play to talk to his coach and get the play from him. Tackle Nine, made go Sorry, ahead. David. Go ahead. Tackle made by number two there, Marcus Smith. Nine minutes and 43 seconds on the clock here in the first quarter. This is the first drive of the ball game for either team, Dade County, with a first down on their first play. And now we got them here fourth and four. Big play at the 46. Quarterback under center, and Dade County going to have to take a timeout. Coach took a little too long there to get the play called, so they take a timeout and going to think about it, and we'll take one as well. Harsh weather doesn't have to hinder your drive. Go strong in any season without sacrificing performance with exceptional handling and grip from Michelin Tires. Go to the experts at McNabb Tire and Wheel, 522 Goodyear Street. TNT Insulation. Whether it is hot or cold weather, keep your power bill at a comfortable temperature by contacting TNT Insulation. Call today for an insulation inspection. Timmy Montgomery can handle your insulation needs. They also specialize in spray foam insulation. Call today at 770-864-1887. Now back to the game on WZOT 101.9. So after taking the timeout, Dade County has thought better of going for it on fourth and four at our 46, and they've decided to punt. Punter standing back at his own at our own at his own 43-yard line. He gets the punt off. It's a low line drive kick, going to be fielded by Javen on the 10-yard line. He brings it right up the sideline, cuts to the middle of the field. They're trying to bottle him up around the 26-yard line, and they do. Get him down right there. But that's a good return by Javen Watley. He fielded that ball about a, about the 10-yard line and brought it out to the 26. So Rockmark with their first possession of the night with nine minutes and 13 seconds left on the clock here in the first quarter. They'll have the ball at the 26 to start this possession. Dade County got one first down before we forced them to punt. So good job by our defense to force – a punt on Dade County's first possession. Dylan Bailey 
Un, uh, in the shotgun, going to give it to his running back, comes right side and cuts back up the middle and gains about three, maybe four yards. Ball carrier was number two, Marcus Smith. So it'll be second down and six. Rockmart looks to the sideline. Bailey brings them back up to the line. Juke Boozer split wide to the right side of the field. The ball's sitting right in the center of the field. Bailey got a man in motion coming to the right side. He's going to fake the handoff and keep it himself. Follows a blocker, crosses the 50, gets to the 45. They finally drag Dylan Bailey down at the 42-yard line. That is a good decision by the quarterback. He ran the option that time, had the option to keep it himself rather than hand it off, and that's what he did. And he took the ball across midfield all the way to the 42-yard line. That's something that Dylan has done a good job of this year is making that decision. He doesn't run it many times during the game, but when he makes that decision to run, it has usually been the right one. And it was certainly that time. It's first and 10, the ball at the 42-yard line. That was uh, about a 28-yard gain there for um, the Jackets on that Bailey run. And I think we got an injured Wolverine. And he's going to have to come off the side. He was not down on the ground, but uh, medical staff met him and uh, helped him off the field. So a stoppage of play momentarily with 8.25 here in the first quarter. Now they'll wind the clock. Juke Boozer comes to the right side of the field, split wide on this side. We're looking at the field from the home team stands. and Drop marks moving from our left to our right. Bailey in the shotgun. He's got Smith in the backfield with him. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got Boozer going down the right side, and he overthrew him, and it was almost intercepted. It, the ball was overthrown just a bit, and uh, it went off the hands of the defender. Juke had the defender. He's got the defender by a good head taller than the guy. The ball was overthrown a little bit, and um, – a little bit to the sideline yeah. as well. Boozer was running down the hash mark, and it was thrown a little bit toward, too far toward the sideline. We're going to split two receivers out to the right side this time. we got Cooper in the slot, and Boozer out on the wide. We're going to run our Watley around the right side. That's Javen. He crossed the 30, 25. He's still running. They finally got him both legs, and he stopped him at the 21-yard line. And there is a flag come in late there. Rockmark's got a first down for the moment. We'll see what the call is. But for the moment, we got a first down at the 22-yard line. We ran the speed sweep to the right with our Javen Watley. Rockmark's backing it up, so looks like it's going to be holding against the Yellow Jackets. Wow. A holding call was downfield at the 31-yard line. They'll mark it back to the 41, and it'll be second down and about nine yards to go. So we'll run that play over again. That was Javen Watley, the ball carrier. He was lined up in the wingback spot on the left side. And right now we send Boozer and Cooper to the left side of the line. We got both Watley brothers, Javen on the left side and ZJ on the right side. Two tight ends in the game. No running back. But Bailey sends Man in motion to the right and going to hit him over in the right flat. He steps around the tackler, and he's finally brought down at the 40-yard line. Picked up one yard out of that. We tried to throw the pass to the wing back who was out in the flat on the right side. He caught it about three yards behind the line of scrimmage and got nothing out of it, really. It's still third down and nine yards to go. He had to fight to get back to the line of scrimmage. So this is a big third down for the Yellow Jackets after a holding call has stopped a first down. We're going to give it to ZJ who dropped the ball and just had to fall on it. So ZJ Watley fell on his own fumble, and it'll be fourth down and nine yards to go. And so we'll just see if Rockmark decides to punt or to go for it here. We're on the Wolverine side of the 50, and it looks like we are going to keep our offense out there and go for it. Bailey is in the shotgun. Two receivers split to the left side. Bailey going to his left with uh, Z.J. Watley, who gets around the end, going down the sideline, and he's going to be run out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. That was a good call by Coach to keep him on the field. Got around that left side and just uh, 
good run. So with six minutes and 29 seconds left here, Rockmart just made a first down after a fourth down. Ball was back at about the 39-yard line, and we carried it all the way to the, the 18. 18. Who ran that ball? That was Z.J. Watley with that carry, number three. He was lined up at the right wing back spot, and that's where he is right now. We bring a man in motion to the right, and we hit our tight end on the left side. Down the sideline he goes, and he stepped out of bounds right before he dove into the end zone. He stepped out of bounds at about the two-yard line. That was Reed Couch, number 47, with the catch. That was a good catch, and uh, Dylan Bailey dropped back and saw him in wide open. Over, He just left his position at tight end, went right out in the flat on the left side, about three yards downfield. He caught it and just ran down the sideline and almost got into the end zone. He stepped out as he tried to dive across the goal line. Bailey in the shotgun, two receivers split to his right. He's going to give it to Z.J. Watley going left, and he's going to cross the end zone. Touchdown, Z.J. Watley for Rockmark's first score of the night. This drive started back on about the 26-yard line. So that oh, would be a 74-yard or 64-yard, 74-yard uh, scoring drive for the Yellow Jackets. Bailey to hold for Noah. We'll see if he can kick it in. Noah Hughes, the kicker, he gets his foot into it, and it's, uh, it is good. That makes it 7 to nothing. Rotmar. We'll take a quick break with six minutes exactly left on the clock here in the first quarter. Love your drive in any season with Michelin tires and experience a confidence-inspiring combination of luxury and performance. Now you can welcome every drive with a little extra savings. Go to the experts at McNabb Tire and Wheel, 522 Goodyear Street. Barnes Insurance Agency offers car, home, health, and life insurance at affordable rates. They offer numerous auto insurance companies so they can get you the best coverage for the lowest rate. They offer tax services year-round. Call today for a free quote. Barnes Insurance Agency, 512 East Elm Street in Rockmart. Now back to the game on WZOT 101.9. All right, we're back here at Dade County. Exactly six minutes left to go. The Jackets up seven to nothing. Uh, that was a, a nine-play uh, series for the Jackets. Started out on our own 26 to uh, capping it off with a Zabrian Watley one-yard touchdown run. So ZJ took it in from the about the three-yard line on that uh, run. And Noah Hughes kicks it high and short at about the 15-yard line. It's fielded by number 11 for Dade County. He brings it right up the middle of the field. I got his number wrong. Possibly he's number 18. And uh, he brought it to the 30-yard line. That's their starting. That's the kid who started as the running back, and he made a good return on that ball. And Dade County has decent field position, the ball at the 31. So it's seven to nothing, Rockmart here. 5:54 left in the first quarter. Rockmart scoring on their first possession of the night. Big plays on that drive was that fourth down conversion. It was fourth and nine, and we decided to go for it and uh, made it. Z.J. Watley with about a 12-yard gain. Going to give it to the wingback, Dade County Wheel, and he's going to get around the corner and got blockers, and he picked up 11 yards. You know, we should know how to defend the wing tee. It's the offense that we run. <laughs> But uh, we stacked everybody up in the box that time, and they got around the corner on us and picked up 12 yards, took it to the 43. Tackle made there by number two, Marcus Smith, for the Yellow Jackets. So for the second time in a row, Dade County's drive started with a long run for a first down on the first play of the drive. We've got to get a handle on that. It's first and 10 at the 43-yard line. Quarterback under center for Wolverines. He brings a man in motion, going to give it to his uh, running back, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage, and he didn't get much. And we got a man jumping up in the top of the pile, and uh, <laughs> yeah. they need to tell him not to do that. He's lucky he didn't get a flag called on him for that. Yeah. Tackle One, made by a host of Yellow Jackets there. A half a yard gain for the Wolverines, and it's second down and nine. It was one flying jacket. Yeah, he jumped up in the top of the <laughs> pile. That's a good way to get yourself injured. Uh, so the quarterback, Walker, comes off the sideline with the play from the coach, and Dade County 
comes to the line of scrimmage. They don't waste a lot of time after they get there. He gets under center and snaps the ball. And he's going to give it to his wing back going around the right side. That's number 12. And he avoided the tacklers. And he's going to pick up about 14 yards on the carry. He took it across midfield all the way to the 41-yard line. That's the guy that uh, will do most of the ball carrying tonight for the Wolverines. That's Malachi Webb. Got an A-plus storage solution high school scoreboard update. Got Pepperell up 7 to nothing over Coosa. So Webb lines up at wing back again. Quarterback under center. He's going to give it to his wing back coming around to the left side this time. And tackle made by number 12, Payne Culver. He was in the backfield. Ball was handed off to the wing back on the right side. They ran that speed sweep. Come right down behind the quarterback. Quarterback turns around and hands it to him. He tried to come around the left side. We had penetration that time and stopped him for almost no gain. It's second down and about nine and a half yards. But Dade County has moved it across midfield to the 41. So a good little drive going for, for the Wolverines here. The quarterback dropped the ball, the center exchange. Uh, and so he had to just fall on it. He may have gained another half a yard. It'll be a second down and a full nine yards to go. Third down, rather. So the quarterback never really had it in his hands as he tried to pull away from the center. The ball hit the ground, and that's a good break for the Yellow Jackets. No gain for the Wolverines, and the ball sitting the nose of the ball right on the 40-yard line. That's, the, that's our 40-yard line. Dade County comes to the line. They run the reverse around the right side, 12, Webb. Picked up about six yards, five yards rather. It'll be a fourth down and four. They ran a reverse. They gave it to one wing back, and he gave it to the other as they crisscrossed in the backfield. Tackle made there by number 21 for the Yellow Jackets. That's Keelan Pitts. Clock running, 243 on the clock here in the first quarter. Dade County is going to go for it. They thought about going for it a little closer to midfield earlier, and Took a timeout and punted. But they got their offensive unit out there this time. They come to the line of scrimmage. And they're going to take another timeout. So, again, on a fourth down, Coach wants to talk about it. With 2.24 on the clock, we'll take a t- timeout as well. Vince Lombardi said, if you don't think you're a winner, then you don't belong on my team. Jeff Bailey here with Day's Pre-Owned Supercenter in Rockmart. And if you're anything like me, one of my favorite times of the year is football season. Our team focuses on how we play the game, from the high quality of our pre-owned vehicles to the relationships we've built with our family of customers. Stop by Day's and meet our winning team. Check us out at daysrockmart.com or give us a call at 770-684-7400. Remember, today is the day. If it is new landscaping or a landscape makeover, Four Seasons Landscaping can make it happen. They specialize in irrigation, plant design, and installation sod, and much more. Call 678-757-1616 for a free estimate. Four Seasons Landscaping, proudly sponsoring Rockmart High Sports. And now more exciting Rockmart Yellow Jackets football on 101.9 Hometown Radio. All right, Dade County with a critical fourth down play here. Fourth and five, the ball at our 36-yard line. We've got to stop them here. Quarterback under center. He brings a man in motion, going to give it to him. He's trying to come around the left side, and we're going to stack him up. That was the ball carrier, Webb, and he was hit at the 36-yard line for no gain. And uh, good job by the Jacket defense to force a turnover on downs that time, and Rockmart will have the ball at our own 36-yard line. Tackle made there by the Yellow Jackets, number 52, Jordan Rachel. All right, so two minutes and 18 seconds left in this first quarter. Jackets up seven to nothing, and uh, Jackets take over on uh, downs here. Big big fourth down uh, stance there by our defense. Good job by our defense stepping up uh, tonight uh, to stop them. So 218 left here in the first quarter. Jackets with a seven to nothing lead, and Dade County running just kind of a plotting uh, traditional wing T. <laughs> yeah. Bailey in the shotgun. 
He's got Marcus Smith in the backfield with him. He's going to give it to him. Coming right, he's got blockers and a hole. He stiff arms a man, crosses the 40. He's out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That is a big run from Marcus Smith. He took that from the 36 on one end of the field to about the 27 on the other end of the field. That was a great run by Marcus. They had a big hole on the right side of the jacket offensive line, and he ran through it and then stiff-armed a defender and kept going. They finally drug him down at about the 27-yard line. And Marcus is lined up at quarterback on this play. This is the first time we've seen that this year, and he's going to give the ball to Z.J. Watley, who goes left, and he's got a big hole, follows gone. blockers, and he's gone. That is a 27-yard touchdown run. He had big Deacon Allen, number 68, out there running in front of him with nobody to block. And uh, ZJ scores for the second time tonight with a minute 50 left in the first quarter. ZJ Watley, a fast running back for the Yellow Jackets. So that drive took all of 28 seconds. <laughs> in three plays. <laughs> three plays. So Bailey to hold. Hughes to kick. The kick is up and the kick is good. That makes it 14 to nothing, Yellow Jackets, and we'll take a timeout for a commercial break. Our kitchen is where our life happens. It's the heart of our home. It wasn't always perfect, but now it is, thanks to a home equity line of credit from family. I just love my kitchen. Use the equity in your house to love your home with Family Savings Credit Union. Visit FamilySavingCU.com. Equal housing opportunity member NCUA. NMLS number 800746. Welcome to the Mini Morning News Show, where we are so excited about Chick-fil-A's chicken minis for breakfast that we've minified the news. In real estate news, tiny homes for those who like everything within arm's reach. In culinary news, micro food, because, you know, small plates. All right, thanks for listening. Now go put some mini in your morning with the chicken you love for breakfast. Chick-fil-A's chicken minis until 1030 a.m. Now back to the game on WZOT 101.9. All right, so Marcus Smith with a 37-yard run, and then he was lined up at quarterback and handed the ball off to Z.J. Watley, and he ran it 27 yards, two plays on that drive, and Rotmark gets in the end zone. Noah Hughes to kick another short kick, and this one may roll out of bounds, and it does. And rolled out of bounds at about the five-yard line. We are clearly trying to kick the ball to certain spots on the field tonight for some reason, and rather than just kick it into the end zone. I got a uh, A-plus storage solution high school scoreboard update. Got uh, Rome up 14 to nothing over Cass. Got Cartersville and Cedartown tied at seven right now. LaGrange up three to nothing over Central. And Harrelson up, uh, County up six to nothing over Lakeview, Fort, Fort Oglethorpe. And because we kicked the ball out of bounds, uh, the ball is up to the 35-yard line. And Dade County rushes to the line of scrimmage. That's their own 35. They send the wing back in motion, going to give it to the fullback. He tried to follow him, and he does. That's a big hole. They picked up nine yards. And once again, a big run. On first down, Pangle, number 18, lined up at that running back position right behind his quarterback. And I don't know, Every, if, the, I don't know if the defenders are not seeing him back there behind those linemen, but that play has been successful on each of the, the first, first plays of, the, of every, all three drives. Dade comes to the line again, the ball at the 42-yard line. They send a wing back in motion. They're going to give it to Pangle again right up the middle. We do stop him this time and do not allow the first down. He's going to be about a yard short. He got to the 44. He needs to get to the 45. It'll be a third and one there with a minute exactly left in the first quarter. And they're just working that our middle line there, that middle. Um, you know, they're just pounding away. With those, that big running back back there. And, you know, he's not a big kid, uh, but uh, he runs the ball hard. He runs it hard. He does, and he follows a blocker. They pull they a guard. Some, and they, they got, got some, some big, big lines. Yeah, they've loaded up the right side of the line. They're going to run it to that side with their wing back, and he crosses the 45. And Webb got to the 47-yard line. And that'll move the chains for the Wolverines. And just for just for the record, that's the 
PA announcer <laughs> that all of you hear. First, I'm getting texts about that. First and <laughs> 10, the ball very near midfield, the ball at the 47-yard line for the Wolverines. Tackle was made on that play by number eight, Tyler Abram. I don't know if they'll get a playoff. Yeah, five seconds left here in the first quarter. They're intentionally not going to try to get a playoff. And so the first quarter will end. Rock Mart leading 14 to nothing here in Trenton over the Wolverines. It doesn't matter if you're a weekend warrior or a star under the local lights. Sometimes it's just not that easy to bounce up and walk it off. That's why Floyd Physical Therapy and Rehab is here to keep you healthy on and off the field. Our licensed and certified therapists and trainers provide quality health care designed to get you back on your feet as quickly as possible. And our urgent care offices are conveniently located where you work and play. Floyd Physical Therapy and Rehab offers the experience and technology needed to get you back in the game. Find out more at Floyd.org. My whole business just went up in flames. But my agent was there before the fire was out. We started a plan. I've got 25 employees who could be out of a job if we didn't get this place running again. My independent agent and auto owner's insurance, they made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. That's incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Contact the Nathan Dean Agency, 1105 North Piedmont Avenue in Rock Park. Did you know that Rock Mart has its very own coffee house? Be sure to check out our trivia night Friday nights and our acoustic live music sets during the South Marble Coffee House music series Saturday nights. We are South Marble Coffee House located at 212 South Marble Street. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook under South Marble Coffee. All right, Dade County at the 47, going to give it to their running back, and he's fighting for yards, gets it to the 50-yard line, and they're going to say he crossed the 50. He picked up about three yards. It'll be th- second down. He's a hard and runner, and, and the way he spent, he's spinning off of the tackles good. Yeah, yeah tackle is. was made there by number 47, Reed Couch. He's like a pinball. He just – Moving, moving in. He's got a couple of big offensive linemen, and he gets in behind them, and they, they don't know where to go to get him. Well, it's hard to pick up with all that yellow. <laughs> Quarterback under center. Brings a man in motion. Going to give it. Ooh, and we hit him in the backfield. They picked up six yards. He needed seven. And I tell you, somebody come running through the line of scrimmage, and the hand, the fake was to the running back, and he blew up the running back. It's third and one, but the handoff went to the wing back, and he picked up six yards. But the running back paid for that fake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tackle made there by number five, Aunt, Peyton Morris. Ant Lester was it uh, inside linebacker, and I think he's keying on the running back, and he just lit him up. Third and one, the ball at the 45, Rock March 45. Going to give it to the running back this time, and he is hit at the line of scrimmage. I don't know that he got the first down. Tackle he's, made by number 51 for the Yellow Jackets. He's close. He's going to be very close. That's junior Jamal Thompson playing defensive line. And they may bring the chains out, and are they just going to say it's fourth down? He's about a half a foot short. And uh, Wolverines will go for it again now for the second time. Ball at the 44-yard line on the rock mark side right. of the 50. And the quarterback going to line up under center. He sends a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself, and he got the first down. He just kind of dove up under his lineman and picked up two yards to the 42-yard line. Well, I guess everybody could tell, could hear that it was a first down. Yeah, first down <laughs> for the Wolverines. Ball at the forty-two. <laughs> All right, Man. we got a A plus storage solution high school scoreboard update. Got Cartersville now up fourteen to seven over Cedartown and Rome up twenty-one to nothing over Cass. <laughs> first and ten, the ball at the forty-two. <laughs> Quarterback under center. And he's going to give it to Webb coming around the right side. He's hit after a short gain, maybe a half a yard. I tell you what they're doing. They're coming. They're they're coming in motion, and when they're getting it, they're kind of stopping and cutting back the opposite direction and cutting through that hole they're making. Tackle made there by number one, Ant Lester. So you got to play assignment football on the defensive side and be disciplined to stop this offense. Mark, I don't hear this much emotion out of you. <laughs> they run the ball yeah. up the middle on almost every play. Quarterback under center again. He's going to give it to his running back. This time that middle is plugged up. He just fell in the pile. 
ball at the 41. But I tell you what they're doing, guys. They're putting on some. They're putting something on film for other teams to watch and yep. know how they can uh, take advantage of our defense. Tackle made there by number 62, Timothy Malone. So Malone with the tackle at the 41-yard line. It's third and nine. And this is a big third down here. We need to stop them and, and keep them in a fourth and long situation because they will go for it here at the 41-yard line. If they don't get it, it's third and nine. Quarterback under center. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got a man running down the right side, and he did not throw it to him. He threw it inside of him, and he was double covered. And a good job by the uh, jacket defenders that time. You know, we got caught a couple of times last week playing run first. Yeah. And with all the run that has been happening here tonight, uh, they did not catch us off guard with that pass. So Payne Culver back with the coverage. Yeah, Payne, Payne stuck with him the Payne whole way on that one. And Tyler there. Abram as well. So both of our safeties back in coverage. And uh, so double covered, it was really, really no chance to complete that pass. They are going to punt on a fourth and nine at the 41-yard line. We got a man back deep. They faked Fake. the punt. They're going to stop him at the 36-yard line. They snapped the ball to one of their up men, faked the punt. The punter looked like it had went over his head. And uh, so Dade County does go for it here on fourth down, but it's not successful. And Rockmart will have the ball at the 36-yard line. A little trickeration out of Dade County. That was a good uh, job by the Yellow Jacks to follow the ball. Yeah, again, stayed at home. Uh, so disciplined on the special teams. We talked about special teams uh, at the beginning of the game and a good play there out of the special teams unit. And for everybody to know that keeps texting me, that's the PA announcer <laughs> you hear. So, so Jeff Sharp is going to have to step it up in Rockmart. Two uh, receivers <laughs> to the right, one to the left. Bailey going to drop back to pass. He's looking to throw. Got plenty of time. He hits Reed Couch in the middle of the field. It's intercepted. It went off of his hands. And uh, Chandler and Cooper made the tackle. And that ball is at the 46-yard line. That penalty is going to be, I believe, on us. Yeah, I think we went in head first for the tackle. I don't know that it was intentional, but uh, we did go in to make the tackle head first, and they're going to get him for a targeting penalty, I do believe. That ball was hit and knocked straight up in the air. I don't know that it uh, I, I don't might have hit a defender. Yeah, I, I don't think it was intentional, though, that head shot there, what we're no, talking the, about. No, the defender came came down he with was, the ball. and right. He was and bent he, over, and we came in on him. That's, so it is a personal foul against the Yellow Jackets targeting. targeting. So that will mark it off from the 46-yard line. That'll take it to the 31-yard line for Dade County, and that's a break for the Wolverines. I tell you, that ball was thrown hard to Reed Couch in the middle of the field, and something made that thing pop straight up in the air, and one of the Wolverines was there to catch it for an interception. That ball, that ball probably went up 15 foot in there. Yeah, it? I mean, did. the Wolverines did a good straight job up. keeping their eyes on it too. Uh, that may be the first interception we've thrown this season in the regular season. Uh, but that one certainly is a break for Dade County. It's 8.05 left here in the second quarter, and the ball <laughs> at the 31-yard line. WZOT Rockmark, W270CE Rome. His wing back to the middle of the field in motion, going to give it to his running back who tries to get around the right side. He stepped outside his tackles that time and took the ball to the 25-yard line. Somebody had him by his shirt tail and wouldn't let go. Yeah, that was Aunt Lester. Had him by the shirt tail and held him there long enough for Payne Culver to get over and knock him down. Second down and four yards. The ball sitting right on the 25-yard line. So. I tell you, they're opening up these holes um, and just allowing them enough to peck through their uh, they, five or six yards at a lick. They've got some big kids on the offensive line, and they – Put extra bodies up there and just follow them. They're going to give it to a wing back going left side this time. And Ant Lester come yeah. up to make that tackle. Number one for the Yellow Jackets with a short gain. It looked like he had a big hole there, and Lester fielded at the last minute. And it'll be third and three for the Wolverines. Ball at the 24-yard line. 
seven oh seven left here in the second quarter. Get Dade County in. with their best opportunity to score so far tonight. The ball on our twenty five yard line, twenty four rather. Quarterback walks up under center. He sends two men in motion at the same time, and that'll be a flag, and it'll back them up five yards. Both wing backs went in motion. We'll they take, saw each other moving and tried to stop, yeah, but it was we'll, too late. We'll take that. So uh, that will back it up five yards, and it will be third and eight rather than third and three. Got a uh, A-plus storage solution high school scoreboard update. Got uh, Pepperell up 10 to nothing over Coosa, Model up 7 to nothing over Armurchi, and uh, East Paulin up 7 to nothing over Carrollton. Be, stay, be sure to stay tuned at halftime for the halftime show brought to you by um, the Nathan Dean Agency. And uh, Brian will be giving you all the updates from around the region tonight as they get up get them in. And then after the game tonight, be sure to, to stay tuned in because we will have Robert Torline and Brian down at the station. And uh, Coach Parson will be calling in and uh, we'll be getting – um, his thoughts on the game tonight, and you can call in and talk about the game too. So we declined the penalty. It makes it fourth and three, and Dade County is going to go for it. They rush to the line of scrimmage. We rush to get our men in place. Quarterback going to give it to his wing back, trying to go right. He may have got enough for the first down. He stuck his head in there right I think after. He's short. It's going to be he's close. Be just. I don't know. They may measure and take a look at it. Tackle made there by number 22 for the Yellow Jackets. Nope, they say that Dade County has turned it over on downs yet again. He was, so he was about a yard short of Coach it. Parson with a good call there to decline that penalty. It was third and three. They jumped uh, illegal motion, and Coach declined it, made it fourth down. And then Rotmart with a stop. And so for the second time tonight, the Wolverines turn it over on downs. So Rotmart's taking over on their own 23-yard line. 6.32 left in this first half. Jackets up 14 to nothing. So last possession ended in an interception on the first play. We're going to send one receiver wide to the right side. We've got a man coming in motion, going to hand off to Marcus Smith, who goes right. He's across the 30, 35, cuts outside right. of a blocker. 40, crosses midfield. He's got two men in front of him, and they wrestle him down at about the 26-yard line. And so no flags. No flags that's, on the play. That's a good run by Marcus Smith. That's a good job by the uh, Yellow Jackets blocking downfield. He took it from our 23 down to their 25. So we'll let you figure that up, Mark. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 6 left here in the second quarter. Duke Boozer split wide to the left side of the field. That's the wide side of the field. And Bailey going to give it to Z.J. Watley. He's coming around the right side, and he's got some room. And he scored from the 25-yard line. That drive looked very much like the last drive. Marcus Smith carried the first play, and Z.J. Watley carried it the second play and resulted in a touchdown. Z.J. Watley making the run look easy. So Marcus Smith took it to the Dade County 25, and then Z.J. Watley carried it in from there. There again, once he's in open field, he's hard to catch. So Smith with about a 52-yard run, and then uh, Watley with a 25-yard run, and the Yellow Jackets are up 21 to nothing with 6.07 left. We'll take a quick break. Lewis Motor Company in Rock Mart carries a wide variety of quality vehicles with the inventory updated on a regular basis to provide you with the best selection. Let Lewis Motor Company put you in a vehicle with their guaranteed credit approval. Lewis Motor Company, 218 South Piedmont Avenue in Rock Mart. Alvis Miller and Son Funeral Home, being the only locally family-owned and operated funeral home in the area, they give wonderful personal attention to you and your family. Their 24-hour community information line is open at 770-684-5438. Visit alvismillerfuneralhome.com. And now more exciting Rock Mart Yellow Jackets football on 101.9 Hometown Radio. Okay, on two plays, the Jackets uh, top it off with a uh, Zabrian Watley 25-yard uh, touchdown run with six minutes and seven seconds left in this first half. Jackets 
Now up 21 to nothing here in Dade County. And Noah Hughes to kick. He's kicking from our right to our left now. I'd like to see him put this one down there close to the goal line. We fooled around, kicked it short each time tonight. He's going to come to the ball. He's going to kick it long and high, and it's going to be fielded down inside the 10. And they're going to bring it up, and we first man missed him, but number 21 for the Yellow Jackets hit him and wrapped him up. And so the tackle, Keelan Pitts, uh, makes the tackle right at the 20-yard line. That's a good job of coverage on Malachi Webb, who was the ball carrier. He's their, one of their predominant running backs, plays wing back. And they put him back there to return that kick. and uh, But Pitts stopped him at the 20-yard line. That's the deepest we've pinned them back all night so far. Yeah, this uh, this drive starts on their own 20. 20. And with 5.57 left, we'll see what they can do with it. Now they come to the line of scrimmage. They've had success running right up the middle against us tonight. They bring a wing back in motion. They're going to give it to the fullback again. He tries to bounce it outside, picked up about two yards, maybe three yards, took it to the 23. It'll be second down and seven, and a tackle made. By number two there, Marcus Smith. I tell you what he's doing. He's coming right up to that line, and and those big linemen are wrapping up those um, our defensive uh, our defensive line, and he's just he's just stepping back and going running right beside them. We've so Dade County in the wing T, quarterback under center. He gives it again to his running back, who crosses the twenty-five, gets to the twenty-seven. It'll be second, third down, and three yards to go. Tackle made there by number 27 for the Yellow Jackets. That's Daquan Banks. And if you'll notice, guys, we got Ant Lester playing nose tackle. <laughs> He's right on the front. <laughs> That's a little different look for the Jackets. Yeah, that is. I'll have to admit that is because uh, he doesn't look like the size of a nose tackle. Well, he's now playing. They, now they've moved they've, him over. Yeah, they've brought, moved him over to the defensive tackle position, playing that three-four. We've even walked a safety up on the line of scrimmage. We're going to give it to a wing back coming around the right side, and Payne Culver come up and made the tackle at the 33, but not before Dade County got another first down. That was Webb, the ball carrier. I tell you, they are wearing out those two kids, number 12 and number 18, run the ball about 90% of the time. One thing Coach Sykes, the defensive uh, coach, said last night, he said the first quarter that was going to have to be a big adjustment for uh, the team, he said, and then – you know, after yeah, that, did. hopefully, we can make those adjust- adjustments and stop that. Quarterback going to give it to a wing back going left this time, and we come up and tackle him at or near, the, at or behind the line of scrimmage, and he is slow to get up. Tackle made there by number 27, Daquan Banks. I tell you, they like you said, they're wearing them out. Yeah, them boys be tired by the end of the game. <laughs> no gain on that play. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go for the Wolverines. The quarterback for the Dade County comes all the way over, talks to his coach at the sideline to get the play. He'll be wore out just running back and forth to the middle of the field. <laughs> they bring the running back over here beside the wing back on the right side. They're going to give it, uh, try to go around that side. They loaded it up with blockers and no gain. And they're going to have an injured lineman slow to get up. A couple of guys slow to get up. That was the that was the the running back, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, number twelve. The running back comes up limping. Third down and eleven yards to go for Dade County. Ball at the thirty-two. They got a first down, but the drive is stalled here at the thirty-two yard line. It's third and eleven. All right, safety, stay at home. It's third and passing situation. They're going to give it to their wing back going right, and he picks up about three yards across the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and a long eight yards to go. We'll see what they're going to do. Tackle made there by number two for the Yellow Jackets, Marcus Smith. They have, they're going to punt. So they will send their punt team out. They faked it the last time, and it was not successful. We'll see if uh, they kick it away to us. Two minutes and 31 seconds left here in the first half. And we're going to send number 39, Keyshawn McCullough, back deep to receive. He does a good job of fielding the punts. He's back at the 30-yard line. 
low snap, and mm. we almost blocked it. And we must have gotten a finger on the ball because we touched the punter, and uh, they did not throw the flag. So I tell you, McCullough it was a, called a fair catch at the 32-yard line, right at the last second, too. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he almost. Uh, Payne Culver was all over him, and what was funny is the kicker started almost falling. Payne was like holding him up so he wouldn't, <laughs> so he wouldn't look like that yeah. he had roughed the punter on that, that one. That snap rolled back to the punter, and it gave us time to get back there on him. We're going to bring our offense back out there. Dylan Bailey, the quarterback. We send Cooper wide to the left side. Two receivers split out on the right side. I think that inside receivers are tied in. Reed Couch, and we're going to throw it to a back out of the backfield. That's Javen Watley. He's across the 40, 50. He's running down the right sideline. Still on And he's feet. still on his feet. They did not get him out of bounds. He's at the 20, and he's still trying to get there to the five. He got all the way down inside the five-yard line. That is a 69-yard pass from Dylan Bailey to uh, Javen Watley. He hit him in a crossing pattern, come from the wing back spot, just crossed about five yards downfield, and uh, they had left the scene to cover the receivers. And Javen Watley had plenty of room to run. After he caught that ball, he took it all the way down to the six. So from the 31 to the six-yard line, Bailey looks to throw again. He's got a man right side who goes up in the Juke. air. Juke Boozer went up and caught the ball in the back corner of the end zone touchdown. And that's one of those plays you just throw it up high and rely on Juke to go up and outfight the defender for it, and he did. And uh, we utilized his height, and that makes it 27 to nothing. Yellow Jackets, and, and we'll tip the extra point. That's the third time we've scored with two plays. <laughs> Two-play drive yet again, this time throwing the ball. With a minute 25 left here in the second quarter, Hughes gets his foot into it and kicks the extra point through, and it's 28 to nothing. Rockmart leading the Wolverines at half to, at, uh, with a minute 24 left before half. Are you aware that untreated wood is highly susceptible to termite damage? Are you bothered by other pesky insects like bed bugs, ants, roaches, wasps, and hornets? Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control for an inspection. They have the experience to handle your pest control needs. Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control today to schedule an appointment. If your saving for retirement approach involves the phrase, I'll get around to it someday, Edward Jones can help. And there's no better time than now to get started towards your retirement goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Steve Kinney can help. Stop by the office at 100 South Marble Street in Rockmart. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Now back to the game on WZOT 101.9. So Rockmart throwing the ball, two plays on that drive. We tried to throw it on that last drive, and uh, we got it through an interception. But this two-play drive resulted in a touchdown. And this is a low line drive kick. Bounces at the 12. It's picked up at the 10. They bring it up the middle of the field, and we tackle him at the 26-yard line. There's a man down after that, and that is their one of those running backs. Tackle. So the ball at the 26-yard line. Tackle made there by number six for the Yellow Jackets, Javon Watley. So we got a minute and 12 seconds left in this first half. Jackets up 28 to nothing. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime. We'll be sending it down to the station uh, in Rockmart for the Nathan Dean Agency halftime show. And Brian will be giving you the updates uh, from around the region. It's a tight game over in Cedartown. The last score I had uh, was uh, Carterville up 14 to 13 over Cedartown. Wow. Hang close there, Cedartown. Hope they give them all they want. Quarterback up under center for the Wolverines. He's going to give it to his running back, and he's hit in the backfield. He lost the ball. Rockmart says they got it. We'll see. No word from the officials. That is, Rockmart recovered the ball. Didn't see who came up with it. But the ball is at the 27-yard line. May have been Payne Culver who came up with that mm -hmm. fumble recovery. With a minute and one second, Rockmart forces a fumble on the first play. And put it in the end zone one more time before halftime. We hit the ball carrier as he was trying to take the handoff. Stunted one of those linebackers in there. 
disrupted the handoff, forced the fumble. Rotmart has the ball at the 26. So Rotmart on Dade County's 26 yard line, leading 28 to nothing with a minute and one seconds. And that's plenty of time to score. We've got some younger players in on this drive, but uh, Dylan Bailey is still the quarterback. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got some time and underthrows his receiver. He was under pressure at the last minute, tried to hit number 30, Chandler Cooper, on a crossing pattern and uh, threw it at his feet. Under- Chandler had some running room if, if that ball had been a little bit higher. He did, He but uh, Bailey was – running backwards away from some defenders that had gotten through there. So not a good job of blocking that time by the offensive line. Didn't give him much time to throw the ball. We got Coopers in the slot on the right side. Boozer's outside of him there. Bailey going to drop back to pass again, and he's in, he dropped the snap, and he's hit immediately after he picked it up with 45 seconds clock running, and it'll be a third and very long. That ball went through his hands. Uh, and Dade County calls a timeout. I think Dade County called the timeout. And with 39 seconds, we'll take a quick timeout ourselves. Mitchell Chiropractic and Wellness at 111 Felton Drive helps people achieve their wellness objectives by combining skill and expertise. If you are experiencing headaches, back, neck, or leg pain, call today at 770-684-4963. It's Timbo's Smokehouse on the Move, barbecue, ribs, and pulled pork. Look for Timbo's gleaming white food truck in front of the raceway in Rockmart, Georgia on Thursdays. That's Timbo's Smokehouse, smoker in tow, and barbecue to go. Call for catering, too, at 770-634-3840. Harsh weather doesn't have to hinder your drive. Go strong in any season without sacrificing performance with exceptional handling and grip from Michelin Tires. Go to the experts at McNabb Tire and Wheel, 522 Goodyear Street. Yellow Jackets play-by-play action continues on WZOT 101.9. All right, it's third and about 18 yards to go. The ball is the 34-yard line. Bailey, the quarterback. He's got two receivers split to his right. Last snap went through his fingers. This one, he drops straight back. He's going to throw. He's got a man open. Boozer at the five, at the 10. He catches the ball, and he's going to be tackled at the three-yard line. What a pass. And he what threw a catch, that ball, too. And Juke Boozer went up and caught it and took it down to the three-yard line. He was running a post pattern. That was and, a pretty pass. And Bailey hit him about three steps after he made his cut on the 10-yard line. And Rotmart with the ball at the four-yard line. And there is an official's timeout on the field. They're going to take a second to get the ball in the right spot. And we'll see what Rotmart dials up here. Clock is running. There's 30 30 seconds left. Bailey in the shotgun. He's going to give it to his running back, Marcus Smith, who cuts inside his blockers. And to get across, he He did with 21 seconds left here in the first half. Rotmark scores again. That'll make it 34 to nothing going into halftime. And the timeout there on third down uh, stopped the clock and gave Rotmark time to uh, call that play. So Noah Hughes to kick. And uh, the snap is good. The kick is up. And the kick is good. That makes it 35 to nothing, Rotmart with 21 seconds left here in the second quarter. All right, uh, just stay tuned at halftime, and uh, you'll be hearing uh, Brian giving you the updates on the Nathan Dean Agency halftime show. And uh, also, after the game, stay tuned um, for the post-game show, and that will be uh, Robert Torline. Brian will be down there, and they'll be giving you uh, the – I'll wrap up on all the games from around the region tonight. Uh, Coach Parson will probably be calling in, and we want you to call in. Uh, they love to talk to you, and, and people <laughs> people on the radio, you know, I've been hearing, you know, great things. The coaches the coaches listen to that after the game. They do. do they? they? So do, do I. They, they, it's they, good. they, it's they a good told show. me They told me last night about, uh, you know, how they, they like to hear people call in. So, 
uh, call in and, and talk to them about the game, and um, they'll be glad to hear from you. It's going to be a long ride back over the hill tonight. It so sure uh, is. Maybe I'll call in. All right, do it. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> All right, he used to kick. It's a real short kick. Going to be bounced at the 35. We're going to hit him at mm. the right there, and he is down. And, again, Rockmart with uh, practicing different kicks. We yeah. tried to kick that one really high, and it bounced between the <clears throat> up men and the, the receivers back deep to receive it. It was fielding and hit almost immediately. Dade County with the ball at the 36 with 14 seconds left here in the first half. Tackle was made there by number five, Peyton Morris, on the coverage. This there. is likely the last play of the first half unless they throw a quick pass. They've attempted one pass tonight. It was incomplete. Dade County in the wing tee, quarterback under center, going to give it to his running back right up the middle. He's going to be hit at the 40-yard line and brought down. Tackle made there by number 52 for the Yellow Jacket, Jordan Rachel. Yeah, number 52 might have been the second guy to get him, number nine. So Hayden Rayburn Hayden as Rayburn well, so we'll give him both down credit. there with him. And so the half is going to end, and Rockmart leading 35 to nothing over Dade County up here in Trenton uh, at the uh, halftime break. All right, so uh, we're going to close it out uh, right now, and – We'll send it back down to the station, and uh, Brian will be giving you the updates from uh, all the uh, games going on around tonight. But uh, you're listening to Rockmart High School Yellow Jacket football here on WZOT. Jackets up 35 to nothing against Dade County. You've been listening to exclusive coverage of Rockmart High School Yellow Jacket football on WZOT 101.9 Hometown Radio. Presented by... The John Purser Allstate Agency, Floyd Medical, the Nathan Dean Agency, The wait is over. It's game time on WZOT 101.9. This is Rock Mart High Football, presented by the John Purser Allstate Agency, Floyd Medical. The Nathan Dean Agency. Okay, we're back here for the kickoff of the second half. Jackets up 35 to nothing here uh, against Dade County. Uh, we had um, first score and drive took nine plays and ended with a uh, Zabrian Watley two-yard touchdown run. Um, the uh, our next score came on a Zabrian on a Two play, <laughs> two play drive with Xavier and Wally finishing with a 27-yard touchdown run. Our third uh, score of the game came on a two play drive. Uh, ended up with another Xavier and Wally 25-yard touchdown run. Uh, and then um, we had uh, the next scoring drive was uh, was a two play drive that concluded with a uh, six-yard touchdown pass to Juke Boozer. And then uh, our last scoring drive right before the half uh, was um, Marcus Smith, a three-yard touchdown run uh, to put the Jackets up 35 to nothing here. And uh, right now it looks like that uh, Marcus Smith is a leading rusher for the Jackets tonight. He has 99 yards so far. <laughs> and uh, Maybe he'll get one more. Got, yeah, uh, Zabrian Watley is right behind him with 77 yards. So, um so big nights for them tonight, and uh, we're getting ready for the kickoff here. And the Jackets will be getting the ball since we deferred yes, we to the deferred, second half. We did defer, uh, so we will have the ball first in the third quarter. Uh, a couple of big pass plays in that first half. We hit Reed Couch on a little out pattern, and he took it down the sideline and almost scored in the first quarter, and then a couple of big plays here in the second quarter, one to Javen Watley. Just ran a little five-yard crossing pattern, but he took it downfield and almost got in the end zone on it. We ended up scoring on the next play. And then uh, another long throw to Juke Boozer, which was really kind of the play of the first half, in my opinion, as far as the way it looked. We hit Juke Boozer on about a 25, 30-yard pass play. 
and got it inside the five-yard line, and Marcus Smith took it in on the next play. But that was as pretty a play as you'll see it was. from Bailey to Boozer uh, there late in the second quarter. He threw a uh, post pattern and threw it up high that so that only Boozer could catch it, and he went up and caught it. Same kind of play in the end zone on the touchdown that Boozer had. He threw that up in the back corner of the end zone. And Boozer just jumped up. He was the only one on the field who could have caught that ball. He's yeah, about six and, and four, Bailey, tall, skinny kid. He can go up and get it. Bailey, um, he had a good twenty-eight yard run himself, but he's got over a hundred yards passing already tonight. So a good, uh, good job of uh, of a balanced attack for the Rockmart offense. As Dade County going to start out with uh, kicking the ball on the ground to one of our up men. And uh, Tyler Abram, number eight, fielded that ball on the 41-yard line. I don't think he was expecting that. Caught him a little off guard, and he just yeah. had to fall on the ball. But uh, they, I guess they didn't want us to return it on him. And uh, Rockmart will have good field position to start this third quarter at the 40. So to sum up the first half, we had a lot of two-touch scores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah two-play drives were the story of the first half. We'll see what uh, the offense has for us here in the second, court, second half. Starter still in for at least this first drive of the third quarter. We've seen this a lot this year. Bailey going to throw. He's going to hit Chandler Cooper, who dropped the ball at the 40-yard line. It's incomplete. That ball was very close to being thrown in uh, backwards, but uh, forward pass, and Cooper was trying to run with it before he caught the ball, and he dropped it. So it's second down and 10 yards to go. He was lined up in the slot on the right side. He had Boozer trying to block for him on the outside. Looks and like we have a running clock, guys. Yes, it does. The clock is running, so the Dade County coaches have elected to run the clock, and we're going to give it to a, run, a wing back, Marcus Smith, who's upended after a one-yard gain. He takes it to the 41, so he got his 100 on that carry. Yeah. He got one yard out of it, and he was at 99, so uh, he's got a 100-yard game tonight. Third and nine at the 41-yard line. Bailey going to send – Boozer wide to the right side. Cooper over to the left side of the field. Javen Watley and Marcus Smith are your wing backs. Reed Couch is the tight end. He's moved out in the slot on the right side. We are going to throw. Bailey drops back to pass. And he hits Reed Couch at the 50, and it's almost intercepted. Number 12 for Dade County made a good play on the ball. That's one of those wing backs. Malachi Webb came up and made a good play to break up that pattern. So Bailey we'll see didn't the see him. So Jan punt team for the first time in two weeks. Yeah, Jan Zetich to punt. The freshman, number 17 for the Yellow Jackets, doing the punting tonight. Cooper Jan Zetich. He's our third or fourth string quarterback. He's a freshman. And uh, he's going to punt. The ball is... Sitting at the 41, he's standing back on about the 27-yard line waiting on the snap. There's the snap. He gets the punt away. High punt. Going to bounce at the 35. Roll to the 30. Down to about the 26-yard line where Rockmark downs it. Pretty good punt. Yeah. And Dade County will have it there. We'll take a quick commercial break. Hey, Jacket fans. It's Dylan Bailey, number 14 for the Yellow Jackets. You know the Jackets are winners, and if you want to be a winner, next time you're in the market for a vehicle, go to Dave's Pre-Owned Supercenter in Rockmart where everybody wins. Tell them number 14 sent you. TNT Insulation. Whether it is hot or cold weather, keep your power bill at a comfortable temperature by contacting TNT Insulation. Call today for an insulation inspection. Timmy Montgomery can handle your insulation needs. They also specialize in spray foam insulation. Call today at 770-864-1887. All right, Dade County to run the ball up the middle on their first play of the third quarter. Picked up maybe a yard out of that. Took the ball to the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and nine. I got an update on uh, the girls' softball tonight, um, this afternoon. Uh, they beat Calhoun 5-4 to four and then uh, beat Ringgold 12-5. to five. So, um, Good night for the Yellow Jacket girls' softball team. And they were up <clears throat> here last night and, and won. Um, and I think Dade's softball team is pretty good. Yeah. They come to the line, quarterback up under center, got a man coming in motion, going to give it to him, coming around the right side, and that's Webb, the ball carrier, and we tackle him at the 28. 
He picked up another foot. Maybe it'll be third and eight. Tackle made there by number 22 for the Yellow Jackets, Kyron. <clears throat> Clock running, seven minutes and 30 seconds left here in the third quarter. So uh, the running clock, this game will end quickly. Kyron Roberts there. Yes, I'm, and that's good. That's good because it's a long way back to Because it's a two-hour drive back. <laughs> Quarterback under center. He's going to give it to his running back, and he's hit at the line but doesn't go down I tell you, Until he's about the third man gets him. Deacon Allen had him around the waist. He's tough. He was hit um, really behind the line of scrimmage and, and managed to come out with about three yards on that. It's fourth and five, Dade County to punt. The ball at our 36-yard line, so they're going to send their punter out there. They have faked it one time tonight. I don't expect them to do that here. About halfway through the third <clears throat> quarter now, Rockmark's still leading 35 to nothing. It's three and out for both teams so far here in the third quarter. Each team with one possession so far. Dade County move. They don't blow the fly, throw the flag. It's a short punt. Going to bounce at the 45, almost hit a man. Roll to the 35. That's a, they got a good roll out of that. About three guys on the Dade County line jumped off sides, but no whistle. Officials going to keep their flags in their pocket as much as possible. The clock's running 6-10 left in the third quarter. And uh, Rockmart will huddle up on the sideline and rush out on the field. After not getting a first down, they may bring their offense, their first string, back out there. I'm sure Coach had some things to <clears throat> say to them after that first possession of the third quarter. They didn't look real motivated. They didn't. Bailey in the shotgun. He's got a man going in motion to the left side. We're going to give it to Javen Watley. He's across the 40, crosses the 50, steps through tackles, 45, 40, still breaking tackles, and he's finally mm. down at the 41-yard line. A great run by Javen there. He just kept fighting there to end, get gaining it, yards. He took it from the 35 to the 41, crossed midfield, and Rockmart with the first down. That's a little better. It's a 24-yard run for Watley. <laughs> Bailey in the shotgun. He's going to give it to him again. This time it's Marcus Smith. He's across the 35, 30, breaks tackle, steps through another tackle, stiffs arm the man, pushes him away, runs into his own <laughs> blocker, and got it to the 13-yard line. Had he not run into his own blocker trying to set up a block, he may have scored on that drive, on that run. So Marcus Smith carried it down to the 13-yard line. So uh, Dylan Bailey looks to the sideline to get the play. Two receivers to the left side. We've got C.J. Culver in the slot now. Juke Boozer wide to that left side of the field. The quarterback going to run it himself. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage and picked up about five yards before they bring him down at the nine. So, Bailey. Good read the, and run with, there on that with play. The, with the option, kept it himself and took it around the left side, kind of between the tackle and the tight end, picked up four yards. It's second down and six. So, he's got a little more running yards tonight. Two receivers to the right. Ball on the left hash. Quarterback looks to the sideline. They're going to play, change the play. Marcus Smith at wing back on the left. Javen Watley on the right. He's going to give it to Smith. Comes around the right side. He's across the 10, 5. Tried to dive for the goal line. I think he's going to be about a foot short. They're going to mark him down on the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal from the one. So Smith followed his blockers around the right side. First and goal. Clock running, 314 left here in the third quarter. Jackets look to the sideline. Javen Watley in at wing back. Marcus Smith at wing back. Bailey in the shotgun. He's going to give it to Smith, who dives across the goal line and scores. That makes it 41 to nothing, Rotmart here with 2.54, and the clock will continue to run while we set up the extra point attempt. 
That's a little more that is probably a... the last of the first string that we will see. After getting stopped on the first possession, three and out, Rockmart brought their first string back out there for one more drive, probably. Noah Hughes to kick. There's the snap, and the hold is good, and the kick is up, and the kick is good, and that makes it 42 to nothing, Rockmart. And so we'll take a quick commercial break. Our kitchen is where our life happens. It's the heart of our home. It wasn't always perfect, but now it is, thanks to a home equity line of credit from family. I just love my kitchen. Use the equity in your house to love your home with Family Savings Credit Union. Visit FamilySavingsCU.com. Equal housing opportunity, member NCUA, NMLS number 800746. Welcome to the Mini Morning News Show, where we are so excited about Chick-fil-A's ch chicken minis for breakfast that we've minified the news. In real estate news, tiny homes for those who like everything within arm's reach. In culinary news, micro food, because, you know, small plates. All right, thanks for listening. Now go put some mini in your morning with the chicken you love for breakfast. Chick-fil-A's chicken minis until 1030 a.m. If it is new landscaping or a landscape makeover, Four Seasons Landscaping can make it happen. They specialize in irrigation, plant design, and installation, sod, and much more. Call 678-757-1616 for a free estimate. Four Seasons Landscaping, proudly sponsoring Rockmark High Sports. Noah Hughes to kick. It's kicked back to the 16-yard line. They're trying to come around the right side. And the tackle is made by Chandler Cooper at the 23-yard line. Chandler just kind of gave him a forearm and knocked him down. Yeah, he caught him off balance there. Yeah, he did. He needs to wrap up that tackle. Yeah. He could have easily spun out of that if he'd maintained his footing. Wrap him and hold him. Clock is running. 43 seconds left in the third quarter. Dade County will probably get one playoff. So we got before 12. Before the end of the third quarter. So we got 12 minutes and 43 seconds left. In the game tonight. maybe about 15 <laughs> it'll take a little time to change ends of the field on between the third and fourth quarter and i don't know they're going to run another play here in the third quarter they're taking a long time coming to the line of scrimmage now they do quarterback up under center still a first string for dade county they're going to give it reverse. To reverse around the right side and he's going to get outside nope he does not Drugged down by big number 51 for the Yellow Jackets. Yep. That is Jamal, Jamal Thompson, Thompson on the tackle, and that'll be the last play of the third quarter. Rockmart leading 42 to nothing going into the fourth. Let's hear a word from our sponsors. Questions about your retirement deserve more than just a call center. Let Steve Kinney, your local Edward Jones financial advisor, show you the difference personal attention can make when it comes to your goals. Contact Steve today, 678-685-6444. That's 678-685-6444. Personal attention. That's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Are you aware that untreated wood is highly susceptible to termite damage? Are you bothered by other pesky insects like bed bugs, ants, roaches, wasps, and hornets? Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control for an inspection. They have the experience to handle your pest control needs. Call Harrelson Termite and Pest Control today to schedule an appointment. Alvis Miller and Son Funeral Home, being the only locally family-owned and operated funeral home in the area, they give wonderful personal attention to you and your family. Their 24-hour community information line is open at 770-684-5438. Visit alvismillerfuneralhome.com. It's Timbo's Smokehouse on the Move, barbecue, ribs, and pulled pork. Look for Timbo's gleaming white food truck in front of the raceway in Rockmart, Georgia on Thursdays. That's Timbo's Smokehouse, smoker in tow, and barbecue to go. Call for catering, too, at 770-634-3840. All right, Dade County going to give it to the running back who breaks through the line of scrimmage and is tackled by number 10, Makai Floyd. Yep. So we got the second string in now on defense. Dade County still running their number one running backs. And number 18 there took a lick. We got Floyd, a couple of our starters still in. Uh, a couple on the – I don't know. Yeah, we do. Peyton Jamal Morris Thompson's is still in. out there. He's played a lot. Daquan's still in. But uh, predominantly this it's is mostly the, second the second string. string. Yep. 
quarterback up under center for Dade County. He's going to give it to his running wing back mm, who is hit, hit behind the line of scrimmage. Hit hard by number 22 for the Yellow Jackets. That's uh, Kieran Roberts, a sophomore. And he got through there and dropped him behind the line of scrimmage. The ball at the 32-yard line. It'll be fourth down and three, and I think they're going to think about going for it. Coach is taking a long time to get the play call, though. Dade County has has tried it on fourth down a couple of times and not, not successful yet. We'll see if this second string can stop them. Fourth down and three. They're going to give it to a wing back going right, and he does get outside. He's going to get the first down. He's bounced it on further outside. Number 31 for the Yellow Jackets is going to wrestle him outside, out of the – that's uh, Jakari Clark. Freshman defensive back stepped up and knocked him out of bounds, but uh, Dade County did get a first down out of that. That's their longest run of the night. They've crossed midfield, picked up a first down. There's 10 minutes left in the ball game, and Dade County's got it on our 46-yard line. Good job by the youngsters to stop him there and keep him from getting any additional yards. He bounced that run outside. And got around the corner. And they're going to give it to him again. They're, run, they're running back, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage, and we take the ball away. Rotmart has stripped the ball from the ball carrier, and number 51, Jamal Thompson, is going to take it in for a touchdown. And all night long, they have that keeping those feet driving. And <laughs> Nobody knew he had the ball. I was watching him tackle back here until he took off team. across the field. Uh, the ball carrier kept running with it, and Jamal Thompson just stripped it away from him as the rest of the defense held him up, and big number 51 has scored. So that's the first <laughs> score of the year by a defensive lineman. <laughs> yeah, you are correct. Defensive lineman scores uh, for the first time. And, uh, good run, though. <laughs> he did. He knew he had it. Nobody else did. And he took off toward the end zone. He knew what to do can, with it when he got it, didn't he? I can tell you, I wouldn't have wanted to get in front of him because he was moving. <laughs> He's a load. <laughs> there wasn't anybody within 30 yards of him. <laughs> Only maybe one or two other. So the kick is up, and the kick is good, maybe. Low. No, it's no, no good. good. Hughes missed that. I don't know what the problem was there. Maybe a bad snap. Uh, but uh, that will make it 48 to nothing, Rockmart. Let's take a quick commercial break. Barnes Insurance Agency offers car, home, health, and life insurance at affordable rates. They offer numerous auto insurance companies so they can get you the best coverage for the lowest rate. They offer tax services year-round. Call today for a free quote. Barnes Insurance Agency, 512 East Elm Street in Rockmart. Lewis Motor Company in Rockmart carries a wide variety of quality vehicles with the inventory updated on a regular basis to provide you with the best selection. Let Lewis Motor Company put you in a vehicle with their guaranteed credit approval. Lewis Motor Company, 218 South Piedmont Avenue in Rock Mart. Freeman Harris Funeral Home, the funeral home that has been providing a strong arm for our friends and neighbors to lean on for the past 76 years. We are proud of the young folks of our community and wish for them success on the field and off. Freeman Harris Funeral Home, Rock Mart's very own. With a set of BF Goodrich tires, you can do more than test your limits. You can crush them. Now you can tackle some of the toughest conditions on earth with a little extra savings. Go to the experts at McNabb Tire and Wheel, 522 Goodyear Street. Now back to the game on WZOT 101.9. All right, we got a different kicker in there right now. I'm going to kick off, and he kicks a low line drive. It's going to be fielded at the 16-yard line and brought back to the middle of the field. He runs into his own man, and we tackle him at the 34. Thank goodness he ran into the back of his own blocker because he had a hole and uh, was trying to exploit the hole. It'll be first and 10, Dade County at the 34. Their last drive ended on a strip fumble. <laughs> Jamal Thompson stripped it at about the 40-yard line and took it 60 yards for a touchdown. I don't even know if the ball carrier knew he didn't have the ball. He kept running like he still wow. had it. Yeah. We kept trying to tackle him. Dade County kept trying to block for him. And I was Jamal watching Thompson five. was the only one on the field that knew he had the ball. 
Quarterback up under center for Dade County. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got a Ooh. man, and he's sacked. Big he had hit. a man trying to get open down the right side, and he sure. was covered well. So, good job by our safety on the pass coverage. And uh, who got that sack? Tackle made there by number 55, Sherman Davis, and that was a big hit. He lowered the boom on him, didn't he? Sophomore clock, linebacker. Clock running with the mm. 540 left in the game. I guess he's not playing linebacker at the moment. He's up on the defensive line. Quarterback walks up under center. He's going to take the snap and give it, fake the handoff going one way, and they bring it around the right side, and we wrestle him out of bounds at the 37. Malachi Webb picked up about five yards on the play. Tackle made there by number 10 for the Yellow Jackets, Makai Floyd. Maybe about three yards on the play, and it'll be third down and seven yards to go for the Wolverines. There's five minutes left in the ball game. Rockmart in control, 48 to nothing. We've scored here in the second half twice, once by our offense, once by our defense. Quarterback under center. Still the first string for Dade County. We're going to tackle him. That's number 55. Sherman Davis. Sherman Davis with another big tackle in the backfield. That kid has got a future ahead of him playing defense. He's got a sack and a tackle for loss here on this drive. The ball's at the 35-yard line. He's just a sophomore. So, Dade County going to punt on fourth down with four minutes and 30 seconds left in the ball game. We'll send – Keyshawn McCullough back to receive. Mark's already packing it up over here. He's no, ready to I'm, go. I'm he? checking the, uh, <laughs> the the lines over here. And it's like we're cutting out a little bit. But I will pack up if you want me to. <laughs> it's almost time. Low snap. Punter going to get it away. McCullough calls for the fair catch <laughs> and catches it up over his head at the 33-yard line. But he caught it. Funny-looking catch there. Reached up over his head and caught the ball. Clock continues to run. 3.55. We'll stay right here. Appreciate yeah, all yeah. our sponsors tonight it's bringing you Rockmart High School football. Make yeah, sure yeah, you go uh, around town McNab, and let them know. McNabb Tire, Day Supercenter, Family Saving Credit Union, Chick-fil-A, Four Seasons Landscaping Team, TNT Insulation, Barnes Insurance, South Marble Coffee Shop, Lewis Motors, Floyd Medical, uh, Harrelson Termite, Mitchell Chiropractic, Alvis Miller Funeral Home, Edward Jones, uh, that's um, Steve Kenny downtown, uh, Timbo Smokehouse, Chicken Scratch, Freeman Harris Funeral Home, and the Nathan Dean Agency, the I Center, um, and then um, John Purser Allstate. So all of these. Uh, Who's bringing them the post game show tonight? Uh, the post game show is going to be. Uh, the Nathan Dean Agency, and so stay tuned for that. So we've got Robert Torline down at the station along with Brian, and they're going to be giving you the updates as the scores come in. Call in, talk to them, uh, and be listening for Coach Parson as he calls in here in just a little while. It's going to start here in just a few minutes because yeah. there's three minutes and 44 seconds. We did take a time out to get some other players out there to let them play. We're going to give it to number 21 for the Yellow Jackets, who carries the ball up the middle and lost about a yard on the play. Number 21 is Keelan Pitts, junior, running back, play some defensive back as well. We see him play a little more on the defensive side than the offensive side. So, Mark, how long is the postgame show? It, they'll go as long as people keep calling in, and, uh, and they'll be getting the scores as the scores come in, try to – uh, keep it on till they get all that covered. Javen Watley hands it to McCullough, who goes around the left side and is out of bounds at the 47. Picked up a first down. The clock will continue to run. There's three minutes left. Javen is in at quarterback right now. Ball is on the Rockmark side of the 50 at the 47-yard line. Robert Torline texted me and said it's going to last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Mart to the line. Got a long ride home. Watley in the shotgun. He's going to give the ball to his running back who steps through tackles, gets across the 50, trying to go back to the middle of the field. He's finally tackled at the 47-yard line. Picked up about seven yards, and it'll be second down and three yards to go. 
Two minutes and 22 seconds left now, and the clock continues to run. Jacket second string here looking good on yes. this drive. Yes, they are. That was about an eight-yard run. It's second down and two. Clock, the chains get set. Two minutes left now. Watley got a man coming in motion, going to give it to him going right. He is tackled from behind. Outside linebacker stepped across the line of scrimmage, forced him back inside. The ball carrier was Jai Pinson, sophomore. Um, I got a uh, A-plus storage solution high school scoreboard shocking update. You got Cedartown up 20-14 to 14 over Cartersville. Wow. In the third quarter. Go Bulldogs. Third and three now after we lost a yard on that play. Watley going to give it to Pinson again, going around the right side. He's got a first down and more across the 40, runs over a man, and is tackled at the 27-yard line. Got a minute and 20 left on the clock here tonight. The chains move. Watley going to go off. Nope, going to go over and get to play from the coach. A minute nine on the clock. They're going to let the clock run down. And Rockmark going to take a timeout so they can let this third string run one more play. And the clock will stop with 56 seconds. We may get two more plays here in this ball game. I believe we're going to. We're going to push it over 50 they, tonight. They want to get these youngsters an opportunity maybe to get in the end zone. The ball's on the 27-yard line at the moment. So uh, it's been all rock mark tonight. It, 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 it has. It. And uh, next week we're back at home, so let's get a good crowd out there. We'll be taking on Chattooga. That might be a little bit tougher game. Hey, what's Chattooga doing tonight? Uh, let me check Give me that here. that high school scoreboard. That uh, – Let's see. The last score that we had was um, got Chatuga up 21 to nothing over Gordon Central. Chatuga's got a good ball team, and they will be, uh, certainly the last few weeks, they will be the toughest opponent we've faced. I believe we're going to just kneel down and let the clock run down. We call timeout, come out of the timeout, and decide to get in the victory formation. And uh, Javen Watley's done that a couple of times this year. <laughs> yep. Get the opportunity to run the clock out. We'll have to do it one more time. We'll run a one more play, and the ball game will end. And this may be the quickest game we've played in but two the, years. But the longest ride we've had. Less yeah. than a two-hour <laughs> football game. Watley to take the snap and going to kneel down one more time, and that'll be the last play of the ball game. Rockmark going to win this one up here in Trenton, 48 to nothing over the Dade County Wolverines. So Jackets go up 5-0 and for the season, and uh, good game here tonight. Started off a little slow for the Jackets, having a tough time with that uh, offensive line for Dade County, but, uh, but were, you know, some critical stops there on fourth down that by the defense that, uh, that helped um, – just kind of boost um, boost the guys up enough to come out and, and adjust. And that's like Coach Sykes said last night, that second quarter, you know, would be when. Yeah, you could see our team make some adjustments on the, on the sidelines and in the field, make some adjustments and get the handle on how to stop that offense. And, uh, you know, as you say, there were some critical fourth down calls that Dade County made and uh, that halted some of their drives. But uh, Rockmark gets a win here, 48 to nothing. It's been a good night. It has, and uh, <clears throat> and it's been a short night for us, but we're going to shut it down here so we can hit the road and head back to, to the Rock. And uh, we want to thank all of our sponsors for tuning in tonight. We want to thank, um, thank Brian down there at the station for keeping uh, everything going, and Robert down there, they're about, we're about to send it to them and let them – uh, do the uh, post-game show brought to you by the Nathan Dean Agency. So tune in, call in, and uh, if you got if you know of any scores around the region, call in and give it to them. Just to keep everybody updated on that. But thanks for tuning in tonight. You're listening to Rock Martin High School Football here on WZOT. You've been listening to exclusive coverage of Rock Martin High School Yellow Jacket Football on WZOT 101.9 Hometown Radio. Presented by the John Purser Allstate Agency. Floyd Medical, the Nathan Dean Agency.